Make no mistake about it, providing your devices with an Ethernet connection to the internet is always a good idea. After all, you get more reliable connections, faster speeds, and less latency or ping when you provide your devices with an Ethernet connection compared to a Wi-Fi connection. So what do you do if you're providing your devices with Ethernet connections to the internet and you run out of Ethernet ports on the back of your router? Well, that's where an Ethernet switch comes in. In this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be explaining to you what Ethernet switches are and how you can use them to effectively add more Ethernet ports to your router. So what exactly is an Ethernet switch? Ethernet switches are also called network switches. As you can see here, this switch has five ports on it. Essentially all it does, it allows you to take one Ethernet connection and multiply that into multiple Ethernet connections. This is a five port Ethernet switch. You can also get an eight port Ethernet switch. This one's made by Netgear. I'll include a link in the description if you're interested in picking up one of these devices. But essentially, if you look at your router, your router has an ethernet switch built in with four ethernet ports. So as you can see here, here's four ethernet ports. It allows you to provide four devices with ethernet connections to the internet. If you need more connections, enter this network switch. You can basically take one of the ethernet ports from your router, use an ethernet cable to connect it to this ethernet switch, and then with that ethernet switch, you're essentially adding four additional ports to your router. Obviously, one of these five ethernet ports is gonna be taken up by the connection between the switch and your router, but then the other four will be open and you can provide four other devices with ethernet connections. It's also important to mention that this is an unmanaged switch that basically means it's plug and play. You connect one port to your router, the other ports you connect to your devices and you're pretty much good to go. They also make managed ethernet switches as well. Those are a little more complex and they require some configuration. Honestly, that's overkill for most users. So that's why we're dealing with unmanaged switches today for their simplicity and ease of use. I'll also be making a follow-up video how to set up these devices. So if you're in the market for an ethernet switch, you might wanna check that out as well. So when should you use an ethernet switch? There are basically three main scenarios where an ethernet switch comes in handy. The first is simply if you have a lot of devices that you wanna to connect to the internet and your router doesn't have enough ports to support it, that's where an ethernet switch allows you to add more ports to your router. So in this first scenario here, you have all these devices. You have six devices. Say your router only has four ethernet ports. You need to implement a switch here so that way you can provide more devices with an ethernet connection. The other option here, if you have devices scattered throughout your house in different areas, you don't have enough ethernet ports available on your router, a switch will allow you to connect or multiply those ethernet ports that are available. The next scenario where an ethernet switch comes in handy is if you have a cluster of devices that you wanna provide all of them with ethernet connections to the internet, what we'll look at here, if you have a laptop, Apple TV, and Xbox, all of them are in a close proximity to each other. What you can do is you can implement a switch in that area. So that way you need short ethernet cables to the switch, and you only need one long ethernet cable between the switch and the router. This would obviously be a lot easier than if you have clustered devices like this and you implement the switch closer to your router over here because then each of these devices would need a long ethernet cable to connect to your switch, and then a short ethernet cable to connect your switch to your router. This makes it a lot easier from a cable management perspective, just because you only need one long ethernet cable as opposed to three or four. This last scenario where an ethernet switch will come in handy is probably a little more unique. It won't apply to most of you, but let's say you have all of your devices here in your home, they're in your living room or in an area close by that are in range of your router's Wi-Fi. You can either use Wi-Fi or an ethernet cable to connect them to your router. But what if you have a couple devices here in your garage that's far away, it's outside of your router's Wi-Fi range, 
and you want to provide these devices with an Ethernet connection to the internet, you can actually use a switch here, connect these two devices in the local area to the switch, and then you can run one long Ethernet cable from your garage, outside your house, back to your router in your living room. There are Ethernet cables that are made for the specific use case of wiring them outside. So that's where a switch in combination with an outdoor Ethernet cable will allow you to implement internet connections for these devices that are outside your router's Wi-Fi range. Of course, another option here is to implement a wireless access point or a Wi-Fi extender, but this is just another option if you wanna provide an ethernet connection for these devices. In this last scenario, there's another benefit of ethernet switches that I should mention, and that's that ethernet switches allow you to extend the maximum length of ethernet cable that you can use. So one strand of ethernet cable has a maximum length of 100 meters or 328 feet. It will stop working if it's longer than that. But with an ethernet switch, your ethernet switch has a power source. So it regenerates the signal through your ethernet cables. What that basically means is if you put an ethernet switch at the end of a 100 meter ethernet cable, you can connect another 100 meter ethernet cable to it and it will still work. So if you need to wire devices that are really far away from your router, you can use an ethernet cable and an ethernet switch in order to accomplish that. Another thing I'd like to talk about, which is a common question when it comes up to ethernet switches, is if the speed of the ethernet connections will be limited by using a switch. In reality, this isn't really a concern. The worst case scenario is if the four devices connected to the four ports on your ethernet switch are all downloading large files at the same time, you might experience some limited speed there because it's limited by the bandwidth connection between your switch and your router. Let's say that's a one gigabit per second connection. If these four devices are downloading at the same time, those four devices might be limited to 250 megabits per second. In reality though, how often are four devices going to be downloading large files at the same time? Most of the time the bandwidth requirements for the devices connected to your ethernet switch are gonna be much less than that. So what you'll see is if you're browsing the internet, another person is gaming online, maybe one person is downloading files from the internet, one gigabit per second of bandwidth is plenty of bandwidth to support those four devices and chances are you'll only be using one device at a time that's connected to this ethernet switch, so you really shouldn't experience any problems. Of course, you understand your home network better than I do, so if you have devices that you know are downloading files from the internet quite frequently, what you might wanna do is you might wanna provide those devices with direct connections to your router, and then your other devices like your connected stereos, your gaming consoles, your computers that you use to browse the internet and watch YouTube videos, you can connect all those to a switch because you know the bandwidth won't be an issue there. If you have any questions about ethernet switches, please drop a comment below. If you found this video useful and you think that you can use an ethernet switch in your home network, please give this video a like. And lastly, if you like the content that I'm putting out on my channel, I invite you to subscribe especially if you want to catch that episode about how to set up an unmanaged ethernet switch, you'll want to subscribe so you can see that video once I publish it. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and I'll catch you on the next one.